Roman here. This is Get Real with Andy. I think this is episode number 17. And yes, I'm here in my sauna and I'm wearing my little robe. And I like taking care of myself, getting back to the basics. And I was reflecting a little earlier that when I was a kid, um, in the wintertime, my father had some medical training. He was trained as a medical doctor, actually. And he used to bring out a sun lamp. And when we were little kids in the wintertime, he would have us wear these shade goggles or whatever, sunglasses, and he would shine this sun lamp on us while we, my brother and me would run around naked. And it was so fun. And uh, also I remember that my daughter, when she was little, she loved being naked. She could, at every opportunity, would just take her clothes off. And because it's some primitive basic level you know who wants clothes and then um as an adult one time i went to visit a friend who lived in a nudist place a nudist colony i guess you call it and i went into the registration area and there was a woman sitting at a typewriter and she was wearing glasses she was wearing glasses and she rolled her chair over to me and she said yes can i help you and i thought Man, I'm having a junior high school fantasy here. But, I, you know, she said, oh, yes, your friend is waiting for you. She's at the pool. This was in Florida. She told me to where the changing area was. It wasn't really a changing area. It was a place where to take off my clothes and put them in a locker. So then I, you know, I went out to the pool where there were young people, old people, all kinds of people just sitting around swimming around, walking around naked. And I was one of them. And it was so cool. It was like monkeys at the watering hole. And the whole naked thing got me thinking about what it is like to get real at an emotional level. And a lot of times that can feel like being naked and really vulnerable. You know, today in the healing circle, a few people took their turn. There was one woman who was sharing her difficulty with some medical condition that she was dealing with. And she was upset because her husband, the more she shared with him, the more he couldn't handle it and would, and would leave. And she felt really abandoned and spent a lot of time in her sharing with us of how angry she was at her husband, who, who wasn't in the room. But I said, if you weren't so busy being angry, what would you, what would you say to him? what do you want from him? And she said, well, I just, I, I wish that he could be there for me emotionally to, so that I don't have to be alone. I don't want to be alone in this. And I said, say that to him in the present tense. I don't want to be alone in my, in this. I don't want to be alone. And I said, so ask him for what you want. She said, I want you to be there for me. Say it again. I want you to be there for me. I could tell she was so in her head. So then I said, add the word, please. She said, please. And then that's when she broke. That's when it, the floodgates opened and she just started crying. And what came out when she finally really let herself get into it was she was begging. She was begging for love, just begging. It was so raw. And when she was done, you know, she was crying and sobbing and begging. And then finally, there was a deep sigh. And I said, what about being angry at your husband? And she said, I feel so at peace in my heart right now. I don't even have, I'm too occupied to, to be angry with him. And I said, see, you know, you made room for this. You made room for your own vulnerability. And you're not going to navigate things with your husband quite the same. It's up to you, of course. You can stay angry with him if you want and try something new you know go to this level with him and she was just so pleased we gave her lovely feedback and she endeared herself to all of us by being so vulnerable and so real real she was like this wounded begging little heart and then there was this other man sophisticated man you know he told us about how he'd had a stroke a little while back and he's on the comeback trail and recently, a lot of people in his life have been dying. Uh, some of them were his family members. Some of them were friends. 
And he just went on and on. He was philosophizing. And I said, I just interrupted him. And I said, if your heart could do its own talking right now, what would it say? And he just started crying. He went straight to the nonverbal. He just started crying. And he had this sad, frowny look on his face. And, and then he just started saying, you know, I don't want you to die. I don't want you to leave me. I don't want you to go. And he was like this whining, whimpering little boy. And he, and I, I said, you're just such a sad little boy. And you're showing us that sad little boy part of us, part of you. And, and he wasn't shy. He just got into it. You know, that's what happens when people take their turn. You know, real really emerges. It's, it's so sweet. And um, he just, he got to the point where he spontaneously said, I'm so sad. I'm just so sad. And I'm okay. I'm okay with being sad. And then there was that deep sigh. That's what happens when people let go and they make peace with something. It shows up as a deep sigh. And he just endeared himself to all of us by being his naked, emotionally naked little real self. And I see that so much as a therapist. And I'm so fortunate to, uh, people invite me in to their inner chambers and those inner chambers are generally, that's where the tenderness is. That's where the vulnerability is. That's where the realness is. And so I'm saying, find your people that you can be real with. Find your voice that you can speak reality with. Find your heart so that you can be in that real space. Because that's what, that's what helps a person feel good about themselves. That's what invites the body to get well, to be at peace with what is. That's the foundation of true wellness. Okay, get real, get well. You know I was going to go there, right? Okay. Love you. Peace out.